Good morning, my dear. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. My lecture today about female genital schistomyces. What we want to discuss today, the definition and the incidence, the etiology, the pathogenesis, the pathology, diagnosis by clinical presentation, and investigation, and lastly, the treatment. Let us start our journey. Schistosomiasis is a waterborne parasitic disease caused by infection with trematode worms of genus Schistosoma. The disease was originally described in Egypt by Theodore Bilharz in 1851, and today can be found throughout Africa, South America, and the Asia. It is estimated that about 779 million people are at risk of infection and about 240 million are actually infected and 120 million are symptomatic and 20 million have serious consequences. Schistomyces is one of the most important diseases of human in tropical and subtropical parts of the world. And you can see the geographic distribution of this parasitic disease all over the world in this map. As you see, it is more common in Africa. So we wanted to ask a question. Female genital schistosomiasis, is it forgotten gynecologic disease since 1899 female genital schistosomiasis has been constantly reported with many different clinical presentation so we should take care about this disease because it is important and has some complications Pilharziasis is endemic in Egypt, for example, of African country, and is more frequently seen in lower than upper Egypt. Female genital schistosomiasis is relatively uncommon. Sites of predilection, cervix, vagina, and external genitalia, while other rare sites as body of the uterus, polypian tubes, and the ovaries. And as you see in this picture, this is a picture of Schistosoma hematobium. This is the female one, and this is the male. And this is the couple, both male and the female. As you see here, female carry the male. And this is the egg. We have three types of Schistosoma, hematobium, mansoni, and jabonicum. This is hematobium, and this is mansoni, and this is japonica. This is more common, both of them, hematobium and mansoni in Africa, japonica more common in Asia. The commonest cause for genital tract problem is schistosoma hematobium. This is the commonest, while the mansoni is rare. What about the pathogenesis? Please look to this picture. The story started from a snail in the Nile or any river or any contaminated water producing cercaria. The cercaria penetrate the skin of the lady. Then the cercaria moves through the circulation, through the lung, heart, until reaching the portal hepatic circulation, where the worm become more mature. When it becomes mature, it migrates again through the circulation, till reaching the small venules. When reaching the small venules, the female leave the male and continue the journey by itself alone to reach the organs like rectum, like urinary bladder, okay, and 
through the circulation also can reach other organs. And when it reaches the organs, it produces eggs, which cause inflammation and cause pathology. Okay? Then the eggs pass through the stool or urine of the lady, then contaminate water again, then reach the snail again and continue the cycle. A while the circaria penetrating the skin may cause articular skin rash, also may cause other symptoms like cough, fever, or may pass unnoticed. This is the acute symptoms, or may pass without any symptoms, or may be discovered later on with other complication. This is a chronic presentation. Okay? So, we have schistosoma hybratobium and its journey reach ureteric vesical plexus to vaginal plexus which communicate with uterine and ovarian plexus where over are deposited and induce inflammatory reaction. In case of schistosoma mansoni, mesenteric and hemorrhoidal veins, then submucous venules of the colon and rectum. This is the journey of both hematobium and mansoni. What about the pathology? We have three stages, stage of cellular infiltration, stage of ulceration, stage of cicatrization. Stage of cellular infiltration, two forms, either localized form or diffuse form. The localized form will cause bilharzial tubercle, while the diffuse form will cause bilharzial granulation tissue. So what about the bilharzial tubercle? It consists of over surrounded by foreign body reaction which consists of foreign body giant cells concentric epithelioid cells lymphocytes plasma cells xenophils okay how why is the diffuse form will cause bilharzial granulation tissue this is the stage of cellular infiltration stage then followed by stage of ulceration then stage of cicatrization stage of cicatrization there is dense fibrosis in all the standing cases then may be also calcified later on we should know an important thing which is the association of the male genital schistosomiasis and the HIV and the human papilloma virus because some recent reports speaking about this and this is very important. There is clinical histopathological, immunological and epidemiological evidence that suggests there is a cause-effect relationship between FGS and the HIV infection. Also, there are hints of Cause effect relationship between female genital schistosomiasis and the human papilloma virus. So many studies are running about this nowadays. So, what about the diagnosis from history, examination, and the investigation? What about the clinical presentation? According to the site of the lesion, is it in the vulva? The lady will complain of pruritus, serous discharge. The lipi majora may be dark red, firm, rough, may have a babylomata. Lipi minora and the clitoris may have babyloma or diffuse enlargement. The hymen is thickened. There may be multiple superficial gray granular ulcer with necrotic floor. If the vagina is affected, there is discharge, which may be blood tinged or offensive. Ruritis also bleeding and spironi. Cecil babyloma, commonly in the anterior vaginal wall, or sandy patches, lesions, or ulcers, or even fistula with nearby organ. What about the cervix? 
If the cervix is affected, there may be post bleeding, there is discharge, which may be serious angina or offensive discharge if infected, or irregular bleeding, or the patient may complain of infertility. The cervix may be diffusely sickened and hard. There may be papilloma, either sessile or pedunculated, or maybe single or multiple. If the uterus is affected, there may be irregular uterine bleeding, and if the patient is pregnant, miscarriage may happen. Uterus is slightly enlarged and little soft. If the fallopian tube and the ovaries is affected, the patient will complain of symptoms like BID. Also, she may complain of infertility and may have a complication like ectopic pregnancy because of pupil pathology. The patient will complain of lower abdominal pain and the congestive dysmenorrhea. This is as regards clinical presentation. This is some picture of schistosoma, the female genital tract. This is in the cervix, locked to this lesion. This tubercle in the cervix, another tubercle in the cervix, another tubercle in the vaginal wall. This is a picture of by laparoscopy with peritoneal pelvic peritoneal affection with tubercle here and here, the larger tubercle or schistosoma tubercle. And this is for a case with uh, complaining of infertility. She was 29 years old, and during laparoscopy. This schistosomal tubercle was discovered and biopsy was taken and proved to be schistosomal. Another picture of vaginal affection with sandy patches, lesions. This is sandy patches lesion here in the vaginal wall. Also cervical lesions as you see this tubercle. This is the Okay, so we can reach the diagnosis from the clinical presentation and from history of exposure, intestinal or urinary pilharziasis, and the diagnosis can be confirmed by the investigation by doing urine and the stool analysis searching for the parasite, doing serological tests. Lies the test, the searching for the antibody for schistosomiasis, biopsy or a smear or scrapping from the lesion or from surface area of the lesion, and send for histopathology and searching for Bernhardt's are over, and the other criteria of the pathology, giant cell. And the xenophil lymphocytes plasma cell surrounding the ova. We can do colposcopy to detect cervical and vaginal lesions, and we can do laparoscopy to detect fallopian tube lesions, pelvic peritoneal lesion, and ovarian lesions. Hysterocell angiography may be important to detect Bilharzia cell pangitis, which characterized by being rigid pipe tube or beat it with terminal dilatation. What about treatment? Either preventive and curative treatment. Preventive treatment is very important, of course. We should eradicate this disease from the whole world. Mass treatment of population in endemic area is very important, and we have a very good example in Egypt. We can imagine that 30 years or more ago, the prevalence of Bilhar diseases in Egypt was about 35%. Imagine how big it is a problem. But nowadays, with mass treatment and many measures by the Ministry of Health to eradicate the disease and to prevent the cycle of spread of the disease from the sanitary, from the contaminated water to the human and so on, with these all measures, the prevalence decreased markedly in Egypt to reach 
0.2% and on the way to eradicate the disease. This is an example for the mass treatment of the population in the nuclear area. The curative treatment, as mentioned by WHO, by giving antibiotic drug called Brazoquantil in a dose of 40 milligram per kilogram single dose and you can repeat it after four to five weeks and there is many clinical trial today about multiple doses of Brazoquantil to be more effective and waiting the results okay we should give antibiotic if there is secondary infection and we should treat anemia if it is associated in this case surgical excision of pilhardial mass or the belloma repair of any fistula whatever zygovaginal or rectovaginal fistula treatment of infertility in case of pathology in post tubes in case of adhesion we can do adhesolysis if the tube is markedly damaged we can do exe also we can manage any other complication if any present lastly and very important to raise the awareness of the infection by clinical health care professional working in rural areas specifically where schistosomiasis is in them. And this is the last slide. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.